Okay, so um, I think we can start because we have already a couple of people connected. So welcome everyone. Good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. I'm very happy to e-meet you uh, through this webinar. So my name is Anne-Flore maman Larofi. I am the Academic Director of the Master in SMIP program. And I'm also an alumnus of this program. And um, today we have uh, we will have a panel discussion with uh, three of our alumni of our program alumni, Newfell, Thomas, and Kirtana, uh, who are going to introduce themselves afterwards. But before, I just wanted to give you a few words of introduction about that program. So the Master in SME program is a master that was created in 1996 um, as a very innovative program dedicated to international business. Before that, uh, there was no program dedicated to learning how to do international business. You had some courses, you know, once in a while, but there was no full, uh, fully dedicated program. So that program was created on our uh, French campus because ESSEC Business School is a French school. Maybe uh, you don't know the school, but it's a French uh, top uh, ranking school in, uh, in France. And um, we created... Um, um, sorry, we we launched our program, our SMIP program on the Singapore campus um, the year exactly when we launched uh, ESSEC in Singapore. So we uh, were one of the first program deployed in Singapore, and that was, if I'm correct, in 2005. And um, that program is running across all our ESSEC campuses. So if you choose to study with us, you will be able, you might be able to study in our French campus, uh, Singapore campus, and even in our um, Africa campus in Rabat, Morocco. So basically it's a program which uh, is composed of uh, a two-year program. It's a master one plus master two program. So at the end of the program, you get a degree, okay, a master degree. And um, depending on what you have done in previous studies and especially your previous degree, completion degree, you will join either directly in Master 2 or you will have to do the two years with us, Master 1 plus Master 2. Um, just uh, because I don't want to make a sales pitch, this is not the objective of today, but I just wanted to um, share with you a great news that I am happy to, uh, to share also with our alumni because they don't know. Uh, actually, the QS ranking for this year um, has been released today, one year ago, one, uh, no, sorry, one hour ago. And uh, the master in SMIB is now ranked number two, best master in management worldwide. So we climbed from number three to number two. And uh, let me share with you that it's not easy to climb from th step three to step two. You know, it's easier to, to, to go from step 10 to step three <laughs> than three to two. So I'm super happy because it means that our uh, program is, um, you know, super highly recognized. So it's a QS ranking, it's an international ranking. And this ranking, we managed to get it also thanks to the success of our alumni, um, among which you have the three uh, people here um, with which we are going to have a conversation. Um, as I told you, this is a very international program. 60% this year of our alumni, uh, of our students are um, non-French students. So don't think that because we are a French school, it's a French um, uh, program. So it's true that we have two French speakers today uh, in our alumni panel. But um, I also want to share with them that for the first year uh, in the history of the program this year, we have less French people studying in Singapore than Chinese people studying in Singapore in the SMIP program. So this year, the French people are in minority. So just to share with you um, uh, this, we have 44 students um, in the SMIP in Singapore this year, 13 French only, 17 uh, Chinese, and then we have Indians, people from India, from Singapore, of course. We have uh, Italian people, uh, Moroccan people, I mean, a very diverse cohort. But uh, the majority this year is, um, it's a historical shift for us because now we have more Asian people than uh, French people. So it's a, it's a great move uh, ahead um, as well. So um, the three people you are going to, we are going to have a discussion with, they have all studied on our Singapore campus at different moments. And um, of course, I'm going to discuss with them why they chose the program, et cetera. 
But I think um, that as an introduction, I would like to um, tell you that the SMIB in Singapore is not only a program where you study, but it's really a program where you are uh, able to enjoy also um, um, a community life with the students first, uh, with the professor community, but also with the uh, alumni community. Um, and thanks to the many activities that we develop, among which we have the Asian Strategy Challenge and the mentorship programs, uh, our students uh, who want to remain in Singapore, they feel, um, they feel, um, um, how, they don't feel alone, okay? They, they are part of a network, so it's really a family. And I usually even say that uh, myself, I'm based in France, but I travel very frequently to Singapore. I'm, I'm in Singapore right now, to be honest. Um, when uh, I mean, I, I end knowing better the SMIP students from Singapore than those from France, because when I come, I'm fully dedicated to them. So, um, so we have this very family spirit um, mindset on this campus. OK, so I didn't want to be super long. Um, the way we are going to, to proceed is I'm going to have a discussion with our alumni. And then uh, we are going the, to open the floor to your uh, questions. Feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A um, area. Uh, you can ask your questions even while we speak, okay? And we will take the questions uh, at the end. And there is no uh, right or wrong questions, just feel free to ask. So first I would like to thank our panel panelists. Uh, so with me today, I have Kirtana. Uh, Kirtana, you did the SMIB uh, last year, correct? 2020, yes. Ah, two years, years ago, yeah. yeah it's yeah. Uh, the COVID, uh, the COVID yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that, yes, that is right. And uh, Kirtana, you are now uh, working at Philips um, in business intelligence, I think. And yes. you are based in Singapore, correct? Uh, remote, at the moment remote. But yes, I do work for the APAC team, which sits out of Singapore. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, then we have uh, Thomas. So Toma, you are um, you are one from last year. I hope I will give it a try. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah I, I'm not turning my camera because it's not working well. But yeah, I just uh, graduated from SMIB uh, this year. Okay, so uh, Toma, uh, you are uh, working for PwC, so um, um, consulting company, and you are an assistant associate. And can you remind me where you are based currently? Because you changed. Uh, I'm currently based in Singapore. Uh, Singapore, Singapore. <laughs> and uh, Newfell, Newfell, who moved uh, quite uh, quite uh, several times since uh, he he did this meet. Uh, Newfell, who is uh, an older, I would say, uh, alumnus, is uh, he was also very much uh, involved in the um, um, student association community here in Singapore, and he's. Uh, uh, working very closely with us uh, as an alumnus. Uh, thank you, Newfell, for that. And uh, Newfell, uh, alors, Newfell, you changed so many times. I need you to help me on, the, on your current job position. Yeah, so I just um, so I just joined McKinsey, so McKinsey and Company in, in Dubai. Uh, I've been a strategy consultant in Dubai for the past two years uh, at another firm, which is called TVS, or uh, you know, a strategy boutique. But I did start my uh, strategy career in the same position as Thomas uh, as an assistant associate uh, in Peter in Singapore. Okay, so I, I didn't know whether it was uh, already starting the, or not, the McKinsey yeah. uh, position. I so started last week. Congratulations for that. Congratulations, Newfell, for that. Thank you. Um, okay, so guys, uh, maybe I will start with a very, um, very, uh, you know, generic question, but I think it's worth it anyway. Um, could you share with us uh, the reason why you decided to join the SMIP program and especially on the Singapore campus? I don't know who wants to start. Maybe Kirtana, you want to start? Sure. I was about to say Newfil will do the honor since he's been an alumni longer than both of us, but uh, I can take a stab at it. Um, so at that point of time in my career, I was trying to make the transition from, let's just say, patient-facing engineering roles to more commercial roles within healthcare. So for me, what I was really looking for was a master's business degree, especially with a focus in international management uh, in APAC. 
I wanted to move closer home, home being India, uh, and APAC does offer the diversity that I want to in terms of work life. Um, so given that was the scenario, I was looking for a program that's broad enough, gave me a good overview of, let's just say, different business um, verticals. And to me, the Singapore campus made the most sense. Um, so I think those were the two factors for me. You felt yeah. maybe you want to automate or not? Maybe you felt, yeah. Go ahead, you felt. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I can I can go. So um so yeah, so my name is Nofel. Uh I've um you know, so I joined this mid uh, primarily to become a strategy consultant, which I have. So it was the first reason, you know, like professionally speaking, I knew what I wanted to do um and which kind of firms I wanted to work for. So for me, the SMIP offered that opportunity. And you know, we had a lot of uh, alumni from from this kind of firms from McKinsey from BCG, so that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, I've always wanted to you know to join a top business school. Um, so I originally I'm I'm originally from France, and I've always thought that you know one day I would study at the, at ESSEC uh, or one of the you know similar caliber schools. Um, so that's that's the second reason, and the third reason is I I did have some track record working in Asia. And I wanted to continue working in Asia. And ESSEC was the only uh, major French business school that had uh, a credible presence in Asia with a full size campus. So in hindsight, honestly, it's like the best choice, the best choice I could have made because I managed to, you know, get all of these points uh, um, afterwards. So I'm, I'm working internationally. I'm working in a firm that I always wanted to work at. And I've gained that Asian experience that I always wanted to have uh, and to continue to continue to have. And to complete the answer from my colleagues, Kirtana, I know it, Nufel. So I'm coming from an well, uh, engineering background. So I have a similar reason than Kirtana has explained to get the, the double competencies, I would say, uh, across engineering and commercial business. And on my side, the main driver was uh, I wanted to get uh, my next position in Singapore. So it was 100% in Singapore before coming. So I made it... Uh, Today, so I'm working here, and that was my first driver. And my second one is the international exposure that you get here uh, by being in the Singapore campus. Thanks to, to the exposure within the, the cohort, as uh, Andrew just mentioned about the different nationality that you can have here, but as well the exposure thanks to Singapore that expose you to all Asia, but not only Asia. Um, I think it's a good start. Uh, I suppose the ranking is here to help you and get recognition uh, around the world, but as well to to move where, wherever you want. It could be like coming back in France, uh, going uh, as new friend mate uh, in the uh, Middle East. So yeah, I think for me it was uh, the unique choice, and I made it uh, because uh, I trust it. Thank you for sharing. Um, if I ask you, um, what what is your best souvenir, your best moment as part of this program? What would you say? I can continue. Uh, on this. Yeah, Thomas, please, please. The best moment you remember, uh, Kirtina, uh, Kirtana, of course. Uh, it was a, a kind of a weird year, but I'm sure you have a best moment, though. So Thomas. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Uh, the COVID restrictions were were released. Uh, around one third of the year. So we were able to, to travel and make the, the business trip overseas. So we did it in, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, that was the, uh, such a good moment because it was our first uh, big movement as the old court overseas. And it was all week where we, we discover businesses in other country than in Singapore first uh, and get exposure to senior level, like C-level uh, people from big companies such as L'Oréal, uh, Michelin, um, uh, and many others. And besides that, yeah, it was a, a big moment we're going to business-wise, but as well to get uh, a nice moment with the full court uh, in other countries to enjoy Kuala Lumpur, but get a, a good understanding about how to do business in Asia. Maybe going off of that, um, 
it was a weird year for us, I have to say, because we graduated at the peak of COVID. Uh, but if there was one um, highlight for me, it has to be the mentor-mentee matchup program that we had. Uh, so basically what happened during our cohort was you, get, you would get matched with a mentor from a similar industry that you're interested in, most likely an ESSEC alumni. I got matched with this wonderful lady, Alexandra Weil, who used to, uh, I mean, who still works at Philips. Um, and that sort of led me into being at Philips eventually. Long story short, I'm a fan of that um, mentor matchup program. You felt what has been your favorite experience? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so my, for me, my best moment was um, when we, um, you know, like uh, participated um, in our first, um, you know, tournament as a football team um, uh, at ESSEC. So basically, uh, I founded uh, and and I built the, the the football team at that time, uh, the, the football team of the full, the full campus. Uh, and so you know, uh, we first started to you know to to play in amateur games, and then we entered. Uh, two competitions against the other universities in Singapore. Uh, and for me, uh, indeed, the best moment was when we first participated in the tournament and we uh, and, and we finished second, which was a good performance for uh, for, 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 for a new team to, to join in Singapore. Uh, and why was it a good moment? It was a good moment because, so obviously we, we, we had a good performance, but also we had a good performance together with people from different programs in ESSEC. So, you know, masters in management, master in finance, uh, SMIB, and that was something I was quite proud of, uh, proud about. Thank you. Uh, so, Kiatana, you mentioned the mentoring program, I think. Um, I mean, uh, would you say that in the future you would like to be a mentor? as an alumnus or, uh, and why? I mean, uh, what do you think is the, the, because when we speak of mentoring, you know, it's uh, often we think that the mentor is someone who is going to give a lot of things to the mentee. Uh, but I think the opposite is also quite important. So I just wanted to have your perception of that. Like, you know, if, if we ask you to be a mentor, um, how would you perceive, you know, the task and why with our SMIB uh, students? Yeah, thank you so much for that. I would love to be a mentor. <laughs> Um, the reason being, though, is uh, a couple of things, right? One, for me, the mentor-mentee relationship was a two-way street, meaning that uh, Alexandra was able to give me an inside view of how Philips works, what the healthcare industry is, what type of roles. At the same time, I think with ESSEC Marketing Club, as well as ESSEC Life Sciences, we were able to work on a sort of a consulting project with the Philips different businesses, right? So this happened for almost, I want to say six months. So we worked on a short project with ultrasound business and then with the health, healthcare informatics business. Now that was important uh, both for Alexandra and me because it really gave a feel for the working relationship vicariously before even working full time with her as a colleague. Um, so short answer, I loved it for the experience it bought, the doors it opened, and just, you know, in general, a relationship that I've come to cherish a lot. Thank you. Uh, Newfell, yourself and Thomas, by the way, both of you, 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 you are quite involved with uh, uh, the program. I mean, you know, you keep coming to our events, etc. May I know why you feel like, uh, why are you willing to, to keep um, this uh, strong relationship with, uh, with the program? What is your motivator? So I, I would say it's because, so like the, the starting point was really that um, when I arrived in ESSEC, I really liked the community. I really liked, uh, you know, the, the, the environment. And that's why I, you know, I volunteered to be a student ambassador. Uh, and when I was a student ambassador, of course, I got to work with the people from the staff, so the marketing team, as well as the teachers, as well as some of the other students. And for me, it's really a kind of working relationship that I really enjoyed um, and that I wanted to keep even as I went on to different, uh, you know, professional endeavors. Um, and definitely, you know, in the future, I would be interested in contributing more uh, to the community, sharing my experience with the students. Um, it, it's really something that I enjoy, you know, like giving back, being able to, to, to passing on to the next generation. So for me, it's a way to, to keep that relationship and to continue to do that. 
yeah. And to complete this answer on my side is, um, I think it's one of the main strengths of ESSEC, which is, you know, the network. So everything starts by, you know, just dropping a message and say, hey, I'm interested. why not uh, next year doing this master? Could you tell me more because you've been through? And and just people are so eager to to share with you their, their experiences, share you how amazing is this past and what they're proud of. And everything starts like this. So and once you go through, you want to pursue and make these things like lasting uh, for, for forever. And we are proud to to be through you know to ESSEC. And and I think it's something that makes ESSEC unique somewhere because there is this specific thing that you can't really describe, but makes you, you know, eager to help anyone that's just interested in ESSEC. So that's why, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I keep going to making things uh, uh, like this even, you know, help and giving my time. Thank you so much uh, for sharing. Uh, may I ask um, how you you think um, you manage to keep um, um, life, I mean, how can I put that? Um, you know, a private life and uh, professional moments uh, work together, together during the program because we have this the reputation, this program has the reputation to be very demanding and to be uh, very uh, time, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, consuming that lots of courses, uh, in-depth projects which take time beyond the courses. So may I ask you how you manage to handle that uh, double life to some extent? Nobody managed, so you don't want to reply, that's it. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Uh, but I mean, I think the truth really is if, if this is going to sound so cliche, but I'm going to say it anyways. Uh, when you're doing things that excite you, excites you, even if it's tough, you do it, right? So for me, it was that, like the course was intense, but I enjoyed each and every class of it. Um, I, I joke about this often. If I didn't sit through the PE class, I would have no idea about venture capital world. And my first gig or short-term employment right after a set was in a VC fund looking after healthcare startups. So sure, it was tough. It was completely out of my battleground at least, but I think the people and just having to get through it when you're learning so much stuff helped for me. Yeah. Yeah. If I can continue on this, um, I think it's one of the main pillars that uh, this program can help you to grow is adaptation. You, you, thanks to the program, you, 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 you first, yeah, get hit by you know the, uh, the the workload and yeah it's very demanding however it's, it it builds you somewhere and helps you to grow on that and make things you know uh, more organized more efficient so it's only it's not only you know giving you um a hard skills it's giving you a sort of soft skills that allow you to get a good organization in your in your life uh to still and to work on how could you, could you make it balancing between professional and personal. So it's it's a way for you to learn uh, how to well balance. And most of the people, I would say, every almost everyone gets used with time. At, at first, it's demanding, but with time, you you start to uh, to learn how to deal with it and making things possible at the end. So almost about uh, adaptation. How about you, new friend? Yeah, I mean, uh, for, for 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 me, I, I I fully agree. So, it was a good transition for me uh, because you know, um, I mean, of course, as consultants, the the workload increases even more, so the expectations are really high. So, for me to be in a program that was already intense um, was uh, what was benefit, especially given the fact that it's it's shorter than some of the other programs. Right, it's a one year program. Many people go to two to three year masters. Um, you know before going into uh, into consulting, for example. So it's important that the program is able to pack everything that you need and also to prepare you for the uh, for the professional life that, that, that that's going to happen. So for me, it was definitely a plus and it was not too intense either. It was the right level of intensity, I would say. Okay, great. 
So um, it's true that in this program, we, we try also to train our students to uh, handle multiple things at the same time, uh, because that's part of your daily job then when you are, um, when you are you know, working, especially uh, uh, when you are consultants. I mean, here we have two consultants. Uh, it's never you know, one task at a time. It's like multiple things that you have to do simultaneously. So it's part of the learning process that we try to do in this program to actually um, make you able to, you know, have diverse brains, uh, depending on the circumstances. Um, speaking about your, uh, your career, uh, guys and uh, girl, um, I mean, uh, I mean, you already shared a little bit, you know, uh, why you did the program, but uh, I have two questions, actually. The first one is, did you know really uh precisely what you wanted to do before uh during the program um and if not um how have we helped you uh either thinking about uh i mean discovering new options or uh maybe uh, how we have helped you um reaching your objective your goal can you a little bit uh, i mean can you share as a story your story mm -hmm. Um, Thomas, do you want to start, maybe? Yeah, I can. <clears throat> maybe I'm not the yeah, I'm not representative of the majority, but before coming to this meet, I knew that I wanted to be a strategic consultant in a, in a big firms. So yeah, and that was my main goal, and uh, I was only focused on that. However, I can maybe share about what was the the common sharing. I would say uh, thinking about my court. It's not really representative. Some people come in the SMIP for discovering and expanding their scope in terms of opportunities behind. And they come and they, they're asking themselves, do I like this? They try thanks to many opportunities offered by the SMIP, such as, as I mentioned just before, uh, the business trips that can help you to get exposure to different industries and different businesses. But as well, the, the ASC project, ASEAN Strategic Challenge, which is a seven month project uh, where you work closely with, uh, uh, with a company uh, and where you develop uh, strategy skills. And that helps you to get also aware about what are the opportunities and do you like this or no. And the last point that I, I mentioned, and I want to, <laughs> to my colleagues talk as well, is you have the track. So the consulting track and the corporate track that allow you to kind of discover, do I like, or do I prefer working in corporate? Do I prefer to work in consulting? Which is not a definite choice for, for later after SMIP. You can do the consulting and working in corporate and, and in the reverse. So it's many ways that even if you don't know, that allows you to like be, be rotated by different opportunities and asking you, yourself about uh, what do I like and making a, uh, Progressing, you're, you're thinking about that. How about you, Kirtana? <laughs> How was your experience about that? I think I was the person who had to figure out a lot of things. Um, I knew I wanted to be in healthcare, but definitely not not um, sure of what kind of roles, nothing, right? So in a way, I was a little bit of a blank slate. Um, and going back to what you were saying, Thomas, earlier, um, this, this SMIP program helped me figure out figure that out, right? So I all, almost always give an analogy of exploration. So SMIP has been that for me. Um, one of the things that helped me a lot in that exploration, I have to say, is the career services, right? Especially Will Chang. I have to, I've said this so many times before, Will goes above and beyond to just help you figure out if you're enthusiastic about figuring out. Um, so that helped me a lot um, during my exploration. So Definitely, definitely the latter type. Um, I know Newfil came in wanting to get into strategy consulting. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I made that clear from the beginning. So it's good that you know that. So indeed, yes, uh, for me, it was very clear. But at the same time, it was great to go through SMIN because it was also a good moment to not only prepare for strategy consulting, but also to explore the other sectors, you know, the other roles that I could be in and understand, you know, uh, whether I would like it or not. So in the end, I decided that you know my initial um, choice was was uh, uh, was my final. But um, but yes, it was good to know about all of these kind of roles, especially since you know uh, 
consulting is not necessarily an industry in which you remain for for a long time. So many people want to exit uh, at some point. So whether it be at consultant level, manager level, or partner level, and it's good to have had this exposure in the past so that I know, uh, you know, have a good sense for what else is is on the market for me. Uh, so yeah, de definitely a, a good experience in that way. I could, I could uh, go to what I wanted, but still explore the other one. Thank you uh, for sharing uh, for sharing that. Um, I mean, um, I was wondering, being very curious, uh, if you remember how you actually found out about SMIB at the very beginning. You remember? For me, it was the QS ranking. That was one of the first benchmarks. Uh, I've always looked at QS ranking because I've regarded it uh, in terms of at least one of the criteria for good schools, really good programs, right? So for me, it was that. Toma, you remember how you actually... Yeah, well, um, I think that for me, there were three criteria. The first one was, yeah, the ranking. You're, you're looking at always uh, top uh, business school, uh, top master in management uh, program. So that was the first one, the ranking. The second one was, I wanted only a one-year program. So this reduces the scope uh, quite uh, heavily. And the third one is, I don't want to do this pro uh, any program in France. So I, quite, I was very, very strict on that. And that's why I consider programs uh, all around the world. But I could share it. So it was in London, it was in Italy, and it was in Switzerland, and this one in Singapore. SMIB was my first choice. And yeah, so I fortunately finished it. So for me, I was, uh, as I said in the beginning, I was working, I was looking for a program within a French business school. I prefer the one-year program and I prefer the program that would let me, um, you know, continue to work and, and, and study and work in Asia. So SMIB was the, you know, the perfect match. Uh, I found it, you know, online when looking for the different kinds of programs that existed. And I reached out also to the student ambassadors, uh, who I think you can still reach out to on the website, who will be able to, you know, uh, give you their experience and, and some tips for applying and for, you know, afterwards in the program. Interesting, interesting. Um, Toman, you felt uh, you were uh, both coming, I think, for the first time in your life in Singapore, correct? Almost. Uh, I did some vacation before coming here, like okay. uh, 10 days in Singapore, uh, three years uh, before coming here. Okay. Yeah, me, 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 me too, about like five days, one week, uh, okay. and also like two to three years before uh, before the program. Okay, but coming for vacation is different from studying, I would say, in Singapore. Is there something which surprised you? Uh, I mean, you know, what is uh, maybe a cross-cultural aspect you would like to share with us? The What, what would you like to, to share? Is, is there something which surprised you in the cultural, you know, landscape in Singapore, like something you were not expecting? Hmm. Maybe, Thomas, do you want to go first? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I can. No, my question. <laughs> it's um, like for an interview again. <laughs> unexpected things? Yes. Could it, could, could it be like in the lifestyle of Singapore? Yeah, well? yeah, sure, of course, of course. It's more a lifestyle question, actually, yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's not about the climate, the climate because I knew that. I think what I'm, the, the first one is the comfort that you can get in Singapore for me. Living in Singapore allows you to get such a comfortable life. And let me explain why. First of all, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really crazy about food. So <laughs> coming to Singapore about food is just the paradise because you can get whatever the food comes from uh, in Jama, Malaysia, or Asia, or around the world. Secondly is you're living in a really amazing place where uh, it's a well-developed country where you're living mostly in condominium and it's where you can get some food, so many, many facilities at your place. And the, 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 the city is like well-designed well to allow you to go, go anywhere in less, uh, half an hour, less, less than half an hour. So you've got many things that you can do accessible to everyone uh, with such a good comfort. 
because I lived in Paris and other big cities around the world, and I didn't get that that comfort. So this was the the first unexpected thing that. Uh, yeah, for, for 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 me, I would say so. I would say that uh, definitely, um, it it was not surprising, but it was even better than I expected. Uh, so you know, it's a very comfortable place, um, and um, you know, it's just it's just such so, such a nice place to live. I would say it was it's what it's actually my favorite place to live, even better than Dubai, which I live in now. But the second thing that was um, again not so surprising, but better than people say is uh is really the the nightlife so i think that nightlife in singapore is better than people think so everyone says it's like it's boring it's like there's there aren't so many places to go but at least before covid and i've been back also after covid it's it's one of, it's also one of the better places that i've seen for nightlife at least i enjoy it very much uh places are like there aren't so many places to go but they're all very um you know very happening uh very sophisticated uh, but not too sophisticated. So for me, it's uh, perfect on that side. So Kirtana, uh, I'm going to ask you a, a quite different question. I mean, you, uh, during your year, you had quite a number of your classmates who were French students. Mm -hmm. uh, how was it to work with uh, French people? <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting question. Tricky question. Yeah, tricky question. Um, yeah, I think I would be too harsh if I say it was, you know, too tough to work with the French. That would just be gross generalization, and I don't believe in that. Um, I, I think what I liked a lot was, even if there wasn't diversity of nationality, there was diversity of backgrounds. What do I mean by that? It's just folks from engineering background, uh, people from pharmacy, people from political science, you know, it's, it's all kinds of backgrounds that um, really came together in a class. So I enjoyed that a lot more, um, and Flor. And uh, did I wish that the classes, there was more English, less French? Yes, but the good news is that has changed since 2020, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, uh, thank you for your uh, honest replies, the three of you. Um, what, um, I mean, know that you, you, you are graduates and you, you have your hopefully dream job. Um, I mean, what is your um, take on the return of investment on investment for you for this program? Because the, the cost is quite expensive. So how do you perceive the return on investments? Did it worth it? <laughs> Maybe I can go first. Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Um, I would, I'd like to focus less on the financial return on investment and rather on the social capital that comes along with it. So for me, that has been key, right? Like, um, yes, there is a financial investment that is needed to get into the graduate program. Um, and at the end of which, there is a salary uh, with a job, right? So that's that's going to be there irrespective of the program. Um, but for me, it is the social capital. And what do I mean by that? It's mostly the people and the network I've been able to build. Um, people, again, comes down, to, comes down to, I would say, three different buckets, right? One could just be alumni, other could be your classmates who've now gone on to work in different kind of roles in industries. Um, other is obviously the career services. So for me, those are the three broad categories within the social capital element. Um, so for me, if I had to say return on investment, was it high or low? Definitely high and high more so on the social capital element uh, than anything else. Yeah, so for, yeah for, from my side, I would say the same. I mean, it's uh, um, f financially sp speaking, definitely, uh, definitely a high return on, on investment, which is kind of like the hard uh, metric. And I would say definitely yes. Um, and on, on, on the social side as well. So basically, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely satisfied I was able to do the program. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the people that I met at that time are still, you know, People that are either um, that, that I either spend time with or people that I work with, um, so it's uh, yeah de definitely um, you know like a no no regret move I would say. Yeah, totally aligned with that. Uh, I'm coming. I'm coming from uh, you know a, a mechanical engineering background, 
who have the opportunity by point to assist in designing, modernization, mechanical things, you know. And is it okay, Andra? I, I wasn't hearing you well. I don't know if it's only me, but um, yeah, I look like a big fish, correct? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe so, you yeah. can take it over, sorry. Yeah, sure. So uh, my engineering, mechanical engineering background uh, afford me, you know, quite restrictive uh, opportunities after graduation. And getting this experience within the SME, which is one of the most... Uh, like for a one year program as a master in management is one of the cheapest one on the market as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so definitely like the opportunities you could get behind is such a, 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 a way to fasten your life uh, so so fast. And the, the return, you, you can directly see this uh, after a year or after graduation. So for me, yeah, uh, the answer is yes, it was definitely worth it. Okay. Um, how do you see your future life? Your face is gonna live in another place and. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I'm in. A, I'm. 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 I'm not exactly sure. So, um, for now, I'm very, I'm very comfortable in Dubai. So I'm starting a new job, and I'm, I'm looking to stay for at least three to five years. Um. I don't see myself coming back to France, at least uh, not on my own will. <laughs> but uh, yes, I mean that's that, that, that's the other thing that I know. And in terms of locations, I'm still debating whether you know I will stay in Dubai or maybe go back to Singapore or maybe go to a third location. It all depends on the opportunity. But definitely continue an international career. Yeah, I, I think I would sort of echo the same thing uh, in terms of what Newfield said. I do enjoy regional ro roles, so it's really tough to go back to, let's just say, country-level roles. Uh, having said that, uh, work-wise, um, still want to restrict myself to healthcare industry. This is where the fun is, honestly, guys, not consulting. Trust me. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. But uh, jokes apart for me, it's healthcare long-term, uh, regional roles. Um, yeah, it's pretty much all of those things. Thomas, what about you? Yeah, definitely line as well. Once you taste the international aspect, you cannot get bored and come back you know, to the regional or the national level. And uh, yeah, for me, it's keeping this past, like in consulting first and from now, and maybe changing locations, so, but always staying in, uh, in Asia for, for the next few years. So it could be Japan, South Korea, yeah. Our thing in Singapore. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. I don't know if there is a final stuff you would like to share, your final word about SMIB. Um, as an alumni, as alumni, what would you want to share? Like one word, maybe, which would describe ideally the SMIB for you, just one word. What would you say? Kirtana, which word? <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> um, don't think. I think that's the word for it. Uh, if you're thinking, if you're contemplating whether it makes sense or not, don't think, just, you know, do it. Thank you. I would say, accel I would say acceleration. So for me, it's, it's one of the best uh, programs to accelerate your career. Um, so that would be the word for me. And for me, it would be daring, right? Daring to go to Singapore, daring to take the opportunities that are offered to you to try new things and discovering maybe a, a new patient, a new environment, a new world, a new life, <laughs> maybe. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I think we can now open the floor for discussion. So I will ask our participants if they have any question for the panelists. You can write in the Q&A area or... Um... So we had a question um, by Luca. Uh, how long was the program you followed, one or two, or two years? Um, 
I mean, they were the three of them were was were studying uh, in the program, which was not in two years, but only in one year, because we we managed to get a better accreditation <laughs> uh, later on. Um, it was not a master degree before; it was a master diploma. No, it's a degree. So um, I'm not sure, Luca, they can uh, reply to your question uh, differently. Do we have another question? If not, obviously our panelists, uh, given that they are very, very involved in the program, I think um, I don't make a mistake if I say you can contact uh, them on LinkedIn, uh, you will find their name easily. And of course you can reach out to, uh, uh, to them. Um, you can also reach out to me by the way on LinkedIn. Um, I will uh, reply if I can, or I will redirect you to someone who has uh, the proper reply. But basically, uh, feel free to, to contact us. You can also go, um, if, if, if that conversation interested you and you want to get more information, you can go on our website. Um, we also have a SMIB uh, LinkedIn page uh, where we share many information and many uh, mini videos by our alumni. Um, we also have a magazine each year that, we, that the students are doing where they interview alumni on, their, um, on a specific topic. And, um, um, I mean, last year's topic was our um, how the school strategy is already being deployed uh, among our alumni, uh, knowing that the ESSEC strategy is uh, articulated around three pillars, um, sustainability, uh, artificial intelligence, and entrepreneurship. So we, we did a magazine on that last year, and you can find it on the LinkedIn group if you want. Um, and of course, um, if you are interested, you can just go on our website and download the brochure. We share a lot of things in the brochure. All courses are listed, um, statistics about the past uh, jobs, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm pretty sure if you go on QS, no, we should have something somewhere. I haven't checked. I just, uh, as I told you, I just got the notification of the ranking uh, one hour before our uh, our webinar and I was teaching. So <laughs> I was not able to go online to see what, uh, what's in exactly. Uh, I see we have some, so we have other questions which uh, just came, uh, came in. Uh, Luca, uh, Thomas, there is a question for you. Uh, you talked about acceleration. No, I think it's a new fell who talked about acceleration actually. Uh, do you have points of comparison with classmates from your previous school, new fell? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be cocky, but none of them is working at McKinsey. <laughs> but so jokes aside, so um, in 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 general, what the program gives you uh, that is not available in like a standard business school is really that ability to um, you know set yourself for uh, being able to take on the top jobs. So you know. Um, for example, like one, one, one of the things that, uh, that, that is required, um, you know, at, uh, um, you know, as part of the interview process of firms like, uh, you know, McKinsey, BCG, uh, and even, you know, Strategy N and Wyman and everything is like the, the, the case study and even at PWC. And that is something that, you know, you need to prepare for. Uh, and not only in terms of proper preparation, but also in terms of having the mindset for it. Uh, and this is something that ESSEC trains you with, uh, because not only is the school focused on these, you know, uh, uh, teachings that help you to have the, the, the right mindset, but you're also surrounded by other students that have the same level of practicality in terms of thinking about business problems. So, so de de definitely, you know, compared to people from my, for, from my previous uh, school, uh, I feel like I've learned so much more by coming to ESSEC as opposed to either directly working or to continue in, uh, um, in, 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 a, in another school. Uh, so there is a second question, which is more for me. Is there a specific process for validating an applicant's prior university degree obtained outside of France? No, uh, we just need uh, you to provide the, um, the degree. Um, I mean, we did an English version. So if your degree is uh, um, in a non, uh, I mean, English or French uh, language, 
uh, you are required to have an official translation of this degree. And I think that's it. Okay, uh, again, feel free to contact us uh, on a different, um, you know, uh, channel, if you want. Um, I would like to thank again our panelists for taking time uh, to join. I know uh, you were all in meetings uh, just before, so you, you took time out of your uh, uh, working uh, environment. Thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you all for attending this, um, this uh, panel. And uh, I hope to have the occasion to discuss with you uh, your eventual motivation or interest in our forums or webinars or whatsoever. Have a great, again, afternoon, evening, or morning, depending on where you are. Great. Thank Thanks you all. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.